my kids. I'm flippy. I rock to the hip in the hop. Miss Anderson will never ever get me to stop. Stop. Motor's not living in the lamp, man. But if there's a machine, he's the genius of the game. C L A Y kids. C L A Y my kids. That's Carol. She's a brainy girl. She wants to erase all the pain in the world. Robbie likes to mess with the other boys, but he's my bro. So please make no. DJ Mom. Motor. Naomi got the best lipstick. She always wanna be the flyest kid. Jesse on the skates and he's sick with the tricks. Irregular statistic known as a misfit. My boy Albert, but you can call him Einstein. But he always stay on the sidelines. C L A Y, play kids. I thought your misbehavior had reached its limit, but what you two did today really takes the prize. <sighs> yeah, uh, I'd love to stay, really, but I've got to see my manicurist at five, so. Get back here! You don't leave this office until I find out what happened to Albert. Why do I always get the blame when something happens to Albert? Just because I once glued him to a skateboard? Because I dyed his hair? Or put chili sauce in his sandwiches? Or spiders in his pencil case? Thank you for reminding me, Robbie. My big mouth. Now, tell me this. How did Albert end up stuck in the basketball hoop with the pineapple in his arms? What is going on here? It, it wasn't, wasn't us. us! I don't want to die. I still have so much to learn, like a uh, quantum physics. You two go to the principal's office. I can't. I'm getting a manicure at five. Principal's office, no! Hold on, Albert. I'm going to get the ladder. Uh, what are you doing up there? Okay, you two were the last ones to see Albert before Ms. Henderson showed up. And you're going to tell me who's responsible. I refuse to say anything without the presence of an attorney. I refuse to miss my manicure appointment. Silence! Now, I want each of you to tell me your version of events from the beginning, Naomi. Okay, I'll tell you everything that happened. It all started this morning when I was going to class. Hey, Naomi. Sweet bag. Is it leather? Yes, it's made of French Ooh. ferret. Is ferret skin good? Not important. It's expensive. It's beautiful. As much as I hate to admit it, I've never seen animals better sacrificed than these. Thanks, Carol, but I'm in a hurry. Hey, just one more thing. What's your secret for having such beautiful skin? There's a reason we call you the Beyonce of school. Stop it right now! What? Stop making things up! I'm not! The Beyonce of school? <laughs> okay, maybe they say Rihanna. Stop inventing things and get to the point. What happened to Albert? Fine, so I walked into class and Albert was there. Naomi, I've been waiting for you. For me? Yes, for you. I, I can't hide it anymore. I'm in love with you, like everyone else in school, except the principal. Of course, he's happily married with his lovely wife. Oh, Albert, I don't know what to say. I brought you a small token of my love. Oh, come on! Do you really think I believe that Albert would choose to show his love <gasps> with the pineapple? May I Finish, please. Okay, but you'd better stop inventing things, Rihanna. I don't know, Albert. A pineapple isn't a very romantic gift. It's only the beginning. Someone as beautiful and stylish as you, always dressed in the latest fashions from Paris and Milan, you deserve so much more. Albert, I'm afraid a relationship between us would be impossible. Nothing's impossible for you, Naomi. Remember the day you matched a pink scarf with a beige jacket? Oh, it's so daring, but it worked. I'm sorry, Albert, but we can still be best friends. You already have so many friends. The whole school is your friend. I'm going to tell everyone how I feel! Albert, wait! Stop! Get down from there! You could get stuck, and later Miss Henderson could think it was my fault and send me to the principal's office. What's Albert doing? 
asking for Naomi's hand in marriage. That's what I'm doing. Wow! And that's how Albert ended up stuck in the hoop. Ah, okay, good. That all makes perfect sense. Really? Of course not! You think I'm going to believe that kind of nonsense? Albert has a fashion-conscious Spider-Man. If you're going to lie, at least make it believable. The Beyonce of school. <laughs> Robbie, you can stop laughing, because now you're going to give me your version of events. Okay, forget about everything Naomi's just said, because I'm going to tell you what really happened. Hey, Jesse. I did your physics homework like you asked me to. And I also summarized the history lesson that you didn't understand. Here. Wow, Robbie. How can I ever thank you for all this? Your friendship is thanks enough. At least accept this as a gift from me. And you know, it is not fair that the teachers made you repeat a whole year. And you're really the most intelligent person at school. Jesse. I'm repeating the year again, because I love this school so much, I just don't want it to end. Oh, please! Do you think I was born yesterday? Sir, though you do look very young for your age, I wouldn't go quite that far. Just get to the point, Robbie. Okay, so when I got to school... Oh, no. <laughs> Stop, Motor! Nobody's going to hurt Albert, the person I care about more than anybody else in the world. Unless you do my physics homework, too. I'll have no choice but to seriously cripple this boy. Over my dead body. Oh, oh stop! That's enough! Your lies aren't going to get you anywhere. For the last time, how did Albert get in the basketball hoop? Albert! Oh, I'm going to tell you how it happened. Everything started yesterday in class. Naomi, Robbie, and Flippy, your homework is a disaster. Mine can't be that bad. It's copied from our chemistry textbook. <laughs> this was physics. As punishment, I'm giving you another exercise, due by tomorrow. I have a manicure book tomorrow? Uh, be quiet and write this down. How long does it take a body weighing 30.7 kilograms to fall from a height of 3.05 meters? Any questions? Ooh, I have one. What's the answer? <laughs> Keep joking around, Robbie, and you'll end up repeating the year again. Uh, you know, I could help you guys with that, but I'm not going to. <laughs> Man, this sucks. This sucks, this sucks, this sucks. Wait, I got it. All we have to do is get something that weighs 30.7 kilos, drop it from 3.05 meters, and time it. And where are we going to find something that weighs that and heights that? A regulation basketball hoop is exactly 3.05 meters from the ground. Impressive. And something that weighs 30.7 kilos? Albert has to weigh about that much. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Whoa, wait a minute. I don't want any problems with Albert, okay? There won't be a problem. No, uh I'm out of here. I'm going to time how long it takes for a coward to run home. <laughs> Forget him. Let's go find the dweeb. What you doing, Albert? Playing a game? I'm simulating a nuclear fusion in atmospheric condition number seven. Uh-huh. Hey, have you been working out? I uh, know. No, no well, well, actually, the other day the elevator was broken and I walked up the stairs. Hmm, that must be why you look so fit. How much do you weigh? 30 kilograms. Darn it! Only 30 kilos! Hmm, we'll have to fatten him up. What are you two up to? Oh, uh, no, don't even think about using me for your homework question. 700 grams exactly. I waited at the fruit shop. On three, Naomi. No. One, <laughs> so much two, and three. Ow. And that's what happened. And they should be punished. I've missed my manicure. That's punishment enough. Thank you very much for your version. But I don't believe you either. What? Look at you. Nobody gets hurt that badly just falling from a basketball hoop. Uh, but you didn't let me finish. 
Uh, what are you doing up there? Naomi and Robbie were trying to use me for their physics homework. I'm going to jump down. No, wait. Are you calling for help? No, I'm going to time how long it takes you to fall. What? No! Oh. Oh. Got it. I think I broke my thorax vertebra, an upper tibia, and possibly my left triquetral. What did you say? I said I really hurt myself. Help me! First grade reset! in a first grade recess. I'm surprised you survived. Well, the question remains of what to do with the troublemakers. It was Robbie's idea! You went along with it! Be quiet! We're both getting punished. Robbie! Naomi! I got it! The answer to the physics problem is 1,012 milliseconds! Ahem! Oh. Let me give you all a math problem. Multiply 1,012 milliseconds by 260,000, because that's how long you're in detention. Mm -hmm. It's three days. Because someday, I'll get that big break. Someday, I'll be voicing spots for big companies. And someday, I may just read a great American novel. It'll happen. That's why I give to the VO Peeps Career Education Scholarship Fund. So wherever life takes me, I'll know I helped get myself and others there. The VO Peeps Career Education Scholarship Fund. I'm looking out for tomorrow. That's Randy Thomas, and I'm Kurt Kelly, live from the set of Actors eChat in Hollywood. Don't forget to join Randy Thomas and myself in Fort Myers, Florida. You can go to randythomaspresents.com and find out about the Voice Over Mastery event of November to Remember, taking place November 14th through 16th at the Sydney and Burns Davis Art Center in the historic district of Fort Myers, Florida. Joe Cipriano, Randy Thomas, and many others will be there. Find out more on Facebook also about the November to Remember event. And Randy Thomas, you can find out on her own website about her work on Entertainment Tonight at many award shows over the years, the Emmys, the Oscars. She's a voice to remember and an event to remember in November. Please join us in Fort Myers, Florida. I'm Kurt Kelly. I hate to brag. But ever since I've given to the VO Peeps Career Educational Scholarship Fund, my karma is really humming. I mean, you don't have to be a genius to realize that giving back is the way to promote and keep those good vibes coming back your way. And really, what's important in this big old world of ours is something as simple as giving back. Ang Ganguza, founder of the VO Peeps, has made it as simple as a $10 donation to help promote a VO talent who may be struggling. I can do that. A one, a two, a one, two, three, four. We wish you a merry Christmas. Ah, wait, 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 Andy. That's the wrong call there. <laughs> <laughs> We're always ahead here in Istanbul. What's that? Hi, MJ. And AG. It's M.O. And A.B. Wishing you a great P.M. Over there in O.C. With V.O. P. from out of the West, determined to take over the world as we know it. There. The VO Peeps. Oh my God. Welcome 
and welcome everybody to our October spooktacular meetup with MJ Lalo. As always, I'm super excited. I'm really excited for tonight's show because we're going to be doing a lot of working out tonight, um, a lot of interactive copy, a lot of live direction. So I want to get right to that. But before I do that, of course, I need to say uh, proper thanks. Uh, First of all, to our live stream sponsors, Edge Studio, yeah. and Gerald Griffith from VO Atlanta, thank you so much for allowing us to uh, bring education to the masses and to our global peeps. So we all love our global peeps. Yeah. Thanks so much for joining us. My dream stream team, Mr. George Whittem, and Josh Dono. evening and Michelle, Michelle Blanker, Blanker staff writer for VO Peeps yeah. helps us to get that those articles out there our resident photographer Mr. Johnny K Global Peeps, who we love so much, Andy Boynes and Mehmet Oner, for always putting together those wonderful promos. Thank you so much, guys. We love you. <laughs> Mr. Mike... Mr. Mike Martin and Il Fornao Restaurant, thank you so much. They have, we have a lovely uh, raffle prize to give away. Uh, they're always such wonderful food sponsors for us, so we thank them. Welcome in. And of course... And of course, what will we do without... Jerry Ganguza. Yeah. <laughs> Who created, uh, of course, a most wonderful Italian themed um, evening. And we are drinking our signature drink tonight, which is called the Jerry, can you pronounce that? Sangria. From? Sangria, which. Ah, sang means blood in Italian. So, cheers, everybody. Thank you so much. Okay, so before we get started, just a couple of announcements, and I have some special guests I want to um, bring up here to talk about some important, exciting um, details that we are going to um, take part in this evening. We are sponsoring the Voxy Ladies Halloween Costume Drive, and I have special guest Lori Firth here to talk about the Halloween Drive. All right. Thanks, Thanks. Anne. So great to be here. Uh, we are collecting costumes uh, on behalf of the Voxy Ladies, and they will be donated to a place in L.A. called the Dream Center, and they work with disadvantaged uh, children and families in crisis and do a lot of really, really great stuff, and so those costumes will go to kids who uh, may not have them. So thank you all for your donations. Also, I think if there's a chance for somebody to win a That's prize. Right. That's right, and if right? you uh, donate a prize tonight, you take a picture and you post it on Facebook, Voxy Ladies, and you will be put, your name will be put into a drawing for a Sennheiser 416 Ooh. microphone. Ooh. Nice. Yes. So I know that our box over there, I don't know if you can get a shot of it, but our, our box is full, and I know I've got a, a ton of costumes uh, in, in the other room. So we're, we're going to be filling that box to the, the box, brim. So the box is getting thanks filled. so much to the Voxy ladies for doing such wonderful stuff. Thank you for everybody for donating um, and giving back. Thank That's you. just wonderful. Thank you, Lori. Thanks, Anne, for talking to you. Okay. Um, next, coming up in November, uh, 14th through the 16th, there's going to be the voiceover mastery event. Uh, with Randy Thomas, and it's going to be at the Sydney and Byrne Davis Art Center, uh, the voiceover mastery event. And I'd like to ask uh, Denise Chamberlain if she could tell us a little bit about the event, because there's some really exciting things happening. <laughs> Thanks, Denise. Oh, thank you. Denise says, come with, come with her computer. I have this my cheat sheets here. Okay. Hi, everybody. <laughs> thank you so much. Where are we? OK. <laughs> thank you so much. 
Uh, where would you like me to begin? To, what, 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 what's the event about? Uh, the event is called uh, the VoiceOver Mastery Event, A November to Remember. And uh, Randy Thomas had this wonderful idea of giving back to the amazing community that supports us all. And uh, in that theme, uh, she's gathered together, um, uh, my gosh, uh, Graham Spicer, uh, David Goldberg, uh, George Whittem of Edge Studios. <laughs> Melissa Disney, of course, the wonderful and gracious Anne Ganguza. Yeah. And um, okay. yeah. And then also Kurt Kelly. Uh, so I have the I have the, the schedule here. Zurich is gonna just walk our brains out uh, <laughs> on on that. And one of the a couple of the highlights of, of the event, um, uh, Friday night we're gonna have a wonderful welcome cocktail party. Mm -hmm. Melissa's gonna be singing some of her songs from her oh, new great. album. There's gonna be a book signing by Randy and hopefully uh, Dan Friedman will be there and bring his books and also oh, Joe his living on air um, Saturday uh, it's like I said it's all about giving back it's all about um, uh, transforming our thoughts about mm -hmm. getting the tools that we need and then also taking mastering action our careers. mastering our careers mm -hmm. taking it to the next level and then learning from these amazing people who have had unprecedented success in their lives and have sustained that success and uh, they're wanting to give back to the community um, one of the things that's going to be an incredible event on Sunday mm -hmm. is we're going to have the attendees uh, read to the children at the of the children's hospital in oh, southwest Florida so nice so we're going to do live book readings which so is Really that are coming, yes. Everybody's gonna yeah, get everybody's involved. gonna get a chance to read, which oh, is really that's great. Fantastic. There's also three opportunities to audition for mm -hmm. uh, holiday promos and Duncan's Diamonds, and I can't think of the other one, it escapes me. Um, and then also, we're also giving away the Sennheiser uh, 416 wow. uh, mic and, and headphones. Yes, I know, everybody does. Everybody's giving them so, away. So that's it. kind of it in a nutshell, but it's all taking place in the in the with well, the beautiful historic downtown dist river district of Fort Myers, Florida, and um, uh, at the, the Sydney uh, and Byrne Davis uh, Art Center, okay. which is just incredible. It was this old uh, post office that has been turned into transformed into this wonderful art center. And uh, Tinkster, uh, Tinkster, Tinkster um, Art Gallery is, is hosting the uh, the welcome party oh, on, on nice. uh, Friday night. I, I saw, actually I saw Randy's interview with Kurt Kelly. Yes. I think it was yes. yesterday um, on Actors E-Chat. Yes. And actually we showed a, a little preview of the the pre-roll here. It was, and it was done through the... She um, did such a phenomenal job. I mean, if you... She's amazing. If you want to know what's going to be happening, I mean, you can... There, the link is probably on the page, I'm sure, it, to the interview. It is. Uh, www.randythomaspresents.com okay. is the, uh, the website. And uh, I also want to mention the discount. Oh, there's a there's a deal for fifty dollar discount on. It's three ninety five for the entire <laughs> event, and we feed you, which is a good thing, kind of like Jerry and Ann. <laughs> <laughs> Just a good thing. And um, I, I want to give you the the Bitly. It's the Bitly um, b i t dot l y forward slash uh, v o m e event discount. So, uh, and you can also contact me uh, at info at randythomaspresents.com, and I'll be or happy to. Or me, and I, I can get yeah, the code, absolutely. too, and at vopeeps.com yeah, in absolutely. case you, you want that code. Yeah. But I'm super excited. Me, too. It's, it's gonna coming be up in, like, a couple of weeks. It's November 14th, 15th, and 16th, and it's going to be amazing. It's a beautiful place, and uh, we just hope you all come and enjoy and, and uh, share in, in the love. <laughs> Thanks so much. I'm, I'm so excited. Thank Thanks you for too. Thank talking you. to us about it. Okay. Okay. And also, we can put this right here. Coming up, December 6th for the next meetup, we have award winning actor, director, producer, teacher, playwright, and author of the voiceover book, There's Money Where Your Mouth Is, Elaine Clark. So that will be Saturday, December 6th, coming all the way from San Francisco. We're really excited about that. Okay. On to the good stuff. I am so excited to introduce my next guest. She is an award-winning VO artist, casting director, producer. She's got 24 years of experience, probably more than that, in audio, music production, voiceover, singing. <laughs> She's directed hundreds of VO projects, um, animation, feature films, games, audiobooks, uh, medical videos. And actually, she just had something that, that came out today, uh, Mummy, I'm a Zombie, that is available on Amazon, and I think you can get it at Target as well. It's uh, sold out at Target. You have to, oh my saying, God. I, can, I it's only sold get one out copy. already. Well, they'll, they'll, they'll put it back. <laughs> 
<laughs> She's won three Addy Awards and ten popular panel awards, done VO for Disney, Miramax, Universal Pictures, Fox Kids. Oh, my gosh, you name it. She's done it. Uh, and you're currently, did, I think you finished directing 52 episodes of Clay Kids. Clay Kids, So right. please join me in a warm welcome for Miss Envy and Lalo. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. My pleasure. Wow. I just want to make sure I don't have any lasagna or something on my... Yeah, well, yeah. I, <laughs> so. Thank you, Jerry, in the house. I'm all full and bloated. Oh, right yeah. And we're, and we're drinking our, our sangria. Sangria. So, yeah. ah, cheers. Cheers. Cheers to you guys. So uh, this is going to get real fun real fast. So, <laughs> MJ, <laughs> so here's basically what I want to do is I, I want to actually talk to you a bit about how you, you got your start. And, and then I just want to kind of um, fast forward because you've got so I much wonderful make it as a street walker copy and, that, uh, that we're going to get to. Yeah, so, so you started off as a singer and you have such a beautiful voice. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. And I have to say I was doing a little research. Mm -hmm. uh, joy. <laughs> if you can talk about that, Joy St. James. Joy St. Who is, James. Joy, who is that? Dance. Dance. She, you did a dance. I actually, I was in San Francisco when it was the wild dance craze there, the disco scene. And I was doing a lot of kind of more jazzy, crazy stuff. And uh, But I was listening to these dance things and I thought, I could do dance, you know, and so mm -hmm. I met a producer and stuff and we worked on it. And then we said, hey, how about for the dance group? What should we call it? Dance! <laughs> So that's the name of your that's song. That's the name, yeah. yeah. So uh, we did a nice thing. It got up to uh, number two on the top, what was called the high energy charts then, because it went that it was 135 beats a minute. Mm -hmm. It was really kick ass. It, it is high energy. I listen, yeah. And every version that I heard is like 12 minutes. Like it's extended versions. They People, did the extended version. Yeah. yeah, they did different disco cuts and everything. I'm and it was fun. Like, I would was go amazing. out on the stage like about midnight in San Francisco. You go out to the discos. Mm -hmm. Everybody's ripped and doing poppers. And, you know. <laughs> But I go out and do a dance, we came to dance, we came to do it till fall, we came to cut up the floor. You know, it was the whole <laughs> giant high heels and, and that I still wear. And, <laughs> and Joy, yeah. where, did, <laughs> well, where did that come from? They said that really, because it's dance, and there was a group called, uh, there was somebody named Lillo, L-A-L-L-O, and there was somebody uh, else called uh, Jolo and something, another group. But basically, they said, you know, I, I don't think anybody really wants to go to a dance with M.J. Lalo. That sounds like a professor or something. And so I just said, how about it's joyful to dance? And then St. James, my, I just said, well, I don't know. My grandfather was named James. Yeah. So I just put that together. So you got your, st I mean, so you were singing. So when you were a young girl. Yes. I assume you were singing and I was we, young once, yes. And, and singing. Young. No, when you, were, when you were a small child. Let's yes. go back there. And were you, you know creating character voices like how did you yeah I went to the into... principal's office a lot mm -hmm. and uh, you know get that and, and you remember they used to mark the box like works and plays well with others and all that get on satisfactories <laughs> and all that and go down to the principal's office every I night so I'm, I'm really glad I get paid for it now it's like <laughs> I can be crazy now yeah I was always getting yelled at for being talk I talk too much but yeah because you you know when you, you came to class and you'd be what's you know how do you learn like that that's so um and I was in theater and all that kind of stuff in, in school, too. So you're yeah. very musical. Well, my father, my father played with Henry Mancini. So, oh, uh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was a musician. He played mm -hmm. bass and, okay. and guitar. And the minute, I always say, the minute I might, you know, as a baby, I could even lift up my chin, my dad put a violin under it, you know. And I was like, oh, you know, I had to, I played violin and clarinet and oboe. And um, he always wanted me to go into, you know, he said, I'm going to make you play oboe because... There's so few elbow players, you're going to go to the top. I mean, because there's like one. <laughs> We're one in Denver, you know. And uh, I said, Dad, I don't want to do that. I want to go in theater, and I want to, you know. But I, I love jazz because that, that's pretty much what he played. Mm. And so I decided. And so I, I had my own group, Lalo and Jazz, to go. And then I went right into op opening MJ Productions and doing scores. We, I got to score for NASA. Wow. And... Uh, I also scored for the Vatican Observatory, which I remember telling my, my Italian, you know, all the paisans of my family, I said, I'm scoring for the Vatican, I'm going to heaven, hey! <laughs> so. But now, interestingly enough, you, you were telling me before that, like, 
you didn't play all the instruments. No, one of the reasons I think NASA uh, liked working with me is uh, they, you know, you go in with your synthesizer. And again, this is the 80s. This is when you turn knobs to get synthesizer sounds. You didn't go buy them or they came with the program. So um, a lot of people would go in and they'd be like, you know, okay, now what's happening here is this star is shooting across the sky and it's going through this galaxy and blah, blah, blah. And I'd say, uh-huh, okay. And the engineer would say, all right, so you want to pull something up, MJ? And I said, no, just turn on my mic. Uh, excuse me? I said, just, just turn on the mic. And then I brought my digital process. Uh, <laughs> so I had these new digital processors. And I just, I just watched the scene. I'd say, ready? And they'd go, phew. <laughs> And I knew how to use the processor. So that would come out, you know, or, or just when there would be, I remember really getting to score for this really swirling universe. And it was just like, just this, ah, yeah, yeah, just doing a bunch of stuff. It's hard to do it because you're not hearing some of the processing, but you could put it on sevenths and thirds. And uh, it would sound really wild and ethereal. And uh, so they said, wow, you just saved us a boatload of somebody going, yeah. let, me, let me turn my synthesizer dials and try and get that. Because you could also do it, the timing perfectly, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And you also, you also do instruments with your voice as well, uh, right? In, in one of your... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and then, you know what, I, I really, I always said I, I'm going to have to do that because I don't have time to learn the trumpet, you know. <laughs> And then I always liked cello, you know, so I would, just, let me see if I can get a bit cello, cello so. Is that a cello? Amazing, amazing. I'm gonna, I, I did it. an album called Voices from the Night Sky, and it's a lot of that sort of thing. And I, I got to get it out on iTunes because it, it, oh, it yeah. did pretty well. And it, some of the cuts from the NASA and the Vatican are on it. So that's going to, I'm going to get it out there. So you, were, so you were singing in nightclubs and singing jazz and dance, and, and, and how did voiceover happen to come along? I was singing at the, at the Coppola studio mm -hmm. up in the Bay Area, and... Uh, we were singing on a wonderful film called A Play in the Fields of the Lord. And that was with Kathy Bates and John Lithgow, Daryl Hannah. I mean, it was, uh, I remember that's the wonderful scene where Kathy Bates rolls in the mud nude. Because when I met her once, I said, oh my God, that is like the most amazing. Was that fun to roll in the mud? And she said, yeah, it was it's challenging. Because what happened is it was a show about all the mission, a uh, film about all the missionaries going down to South America. And uh, we gave them our diseases because they didn't, they didn't have an immune system for it. So I'm singing on that. And actually, it was great to be doing what I was doing and all that, that sort of thing. Because when I got called to audition for it, the gal from South America was there. And she says, you know, this is an indigenous language that these people spoke. So uh, are you ready to try? And I couldn't even read it, the what it looked like. And I said, I, 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 I'm not. She said, no, 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 just listen to me. And I said, OK. And she goes, ready? And I go, yeah. And she goes, And I went, hey, and hey, OK. She said, oh, my, great. So it was only those of us that, that you know, mm -hmm. nobody could go in getting to know you. And I was like, nah. I said, so some of these poor people they called in were like, what? Hink has in the life. So, so I got the gig. And I was walking out of that gig. And uh, we did, the, uh, we did the, uh, all of the wall and everything for it, too. And this gal walked out with me. I, and she said, oh, boy, that sure was fun. And I said, oh, my God, that's, that's a great voice. And she said, yeah, I'm studying voices. And I said, you can study voice? Wow, where's that at, you know? And so, so she gave me this woman's name, Samantha Paris. And uh, I drove out to Mill Valley uh, to her house and showed her some stuff that I was already doing. And uh, she said, you got to do this. You got to do this. And my first teacher was Sue Blue. Because right after that, I said, I got to do it. When's your first class? And they said, you know, Susan Blue was going to do a weekend. And I, I just fell in love with that. I said, there we go. So I, and I, just, I, I really went to classes for a couple of years and, uh, and then jumped in. And here we are. <laughs> so many years later. And yeah. so how has, how has the industry, when you started off, how has it changed um, Boy, since I then? Boy, I think people that are getting in now, you have it so easy. You're not sitting there going, 
hiring an artist to do your CD cover, going to the post office, trying to get it to somebody. And, and I also remember that you do your demo, and then you send it to, I was sending it to some agencies in San Francisco, and I'd call to follow. Yeah, MJ Lalo, I sent my demo. Uh, MJ, darling, do you, could you just have your agent submit it? You know, and I'd be like, oh. So that, you couldn't really get in. I mean, you had to have an agent to get you someplace. And you had to have all this artwork done, and you know it was just pretty, pretty intense. But there's no online. I mean, all this online stuff and the kind of uh, opportunities that people have now is amazing. It's really amazing. Were you focusing on commercial at that time, or you know, animation, or when? I, I was focusing on all of it because uh, I was. I take it off of your skin. Oh, it's on my skin. Yeah, Are we getting a skin reading? Or is it? <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> it's picking your skin up too much. Is it picking up my heartbeat like under that? No, <laughs> thank you. Downboard, downboard. Was it getting kind of blue? Blue? <laughs> blue? Um, blue? 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 I forgot my train of thought. So you, first, you, you first started, you were doing commercial, I mean, you had a commercial demo. Oh, well, I was, had... I was doing animation, and I, I booked this gig. I mean, I was more into that, because I'd taken a, definitely taken some classes in it, and uh, I was reading, I was playing this person had, that had, with, had tennis elbow, and I was like, oh, this is really killing me, you know, and they were animating it, and uh, so the, guy, the director said something to me, and I said, I, I'm sorry, did you want me to go to the top of the page, and, uh, you know, for this line or this, and he said, uh, MJ, MJ, would you read the uh, announcer? And I said, oh, yeah, okay. Finally, a health plan that can really help you and your children. He said, yeah, would, would, I th I, could you be the announcer? And I said, okay. <laughs> you know, so it was like I thought, wow, I never thought about my real, you know, my own voice because I was so playful to be in animation. Yeah, so only... then I said, okay, now I'm going to take some, com some commercial classes. And, so and when the first gigs I got was Disney. The so, Epcot Center, yeah. So uh, back then, were you going into studios and recording? And that, is that still really how it works with That's animation? That's how it was back mm -hmm. Well, in animate, no, you, you, yeah. I mean, when people come to my studio, it's, uh, you know, it's uh, we just, basically, we, we don't do dubbing at my studio. We just, we're just doing the script there as it is, and then we send it to them, and then they animate to it. Yeah, there's dubbing where you, you know, you dub the voiceover. I mean, the characters are, and, and it's usually in another language. We, we're doing it all in English. And, and I have to say that's an advantage, too, because, uh, like, when people say, well, do I have a chance? And I said, well, I think you have a better chance than somebody in Nebraska. <laughs> it's like, give me some talent from Nebraska, Wichita Falls. I mean, no, it's like this, people come here for voice talent, for sure. And so that's a big, big plus, because it's, you know, everybody knows this is where the giant, talent pool is. So you were in San Francisco for a while and then you moved to Burbank. So what was it that drove uh, you to, to move? Well, I, I, I felt like I could, had done a, what I could do up mm -hmm. there and then I thought I, I'm going to come down here and uh, just see what, see what can happen. And uh, when was that? That was 90, well, end of 97. Oh, okay. Right into 98. And um, um, I, here's, here's a great thing, I mean, taking advantage of, uh, of a situation like I, uh, Patrick Fraley, who I took a lot of lessons from too, he came up with Nancy Wilson, uh, who was working at Abrams, Rubeloff and Lawrence, and they came up and they were watching, you know, one of the classes, the, the advanced class that I was in, and Patrick came up to me and he said, hey, Nancy thinks, you know, you're really good. And I said, oh. So... I called and I said, hey, Nancy, do you, can I send you my, because, you know, get the cassette out and all of it, you know, and send her the cassette. She says, hey, we really liked it. And, uh, and she says, if you're ever in L.A., give us a buzz. And I said, that's so funny. I'm going to be there in two weeks for my brother's birthday. She said, great. What a lie. I totally lied. <laughs> and I went down, met her and Linda McCarroll at Abrams, Rebeloff, and Lawrence, and I'm sitting there, we're talking about, you know, stuff that I was doing, and I said, okay, and they said, well, yeah, great demo, da, 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 and I said, so, uh, you know, nobody, neither of them said anything, and I said, so, uh, where, where do we go from here, you know, and they said, well, if you ever move to L.A., uh, you have a home with us, and I said, I'll be here in a month, boom, Wow. yeah, so I take advantage of those situations, and, you know, I just got on a plane, came down here in two weeks, and then uh, went back to, back to Sonoma County, told my friends, I'm, I'm moving to L.A. in a month. They're like, no. <laughs> now, 
did you own a did you own a studio in San Francisco and then no or, okay so I, I what we had when we, I was composing more we did have a studio mm -hmm. myself and Heike Koskinen from Norway uh, <laughs> he, he's a trumpet player a great trumpet player um, so we had a, a, a small studio but the, a, a music studio is completely different I mean I did vocals and stuff in there but it wasn't like a big studio mm -hmm. my studio now is it's not a big studio but I mean I teach produce cast and, and direct there and it's it's Right up the street from Warner Brothers, all the big dub you know, dubbing mm -hmm. brothers and all that. Sure. Soundworks. So, how long were you here before? I mean, was you moved here and then? Oh, I'm going to open a studio, or was it? You know, um, you were here for a while and then you eventually opened up a studio because you were getting so much work and you were teaching. How did that all come about? Um, well, you know, one of the big things that they just came to my studio was women in animation. I called uh, some people and. Uh, I said, you know, do you guys have a, a voiceover department? And, and they said, no, 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 we, you know, we do animation and drawing, blah, 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 this and that, but uh, we're more of an animation, animation, not the voices. And I said, oh, but you're going to need voices at some point. And they said, well, why don't you call this gal Kelly, Coop, Kelly B. Cooper? So I called her and started talking to her about stuff. And, and she said, oh, yeah, well, you know, I mean, if you want to send a demo to me, you can. I mean, we don't, you know, we don't really do that part. And I said, okay, what's your address? She goes, she gives me the address. I said, oh, my God, you're my neighbor. <laughs> so I went up the block, gave it to her. We sat, we had coffee and tea. She's, I said, why don't I just start the voice, a voiceover group? And she's, great, you know. So things started happening right away, and uh, I was I'm just fortunate that way. And then um, I joined, because my singing, I joined the Della Reese Choir. And went to that church for a while. And uh, one Sunday they said, hey, we're having some financial people come in. They're going to talk to you guys free. Okay. Dropped my card in the bowl. And uh, they pulled, and said, the winner is MJ Lalo. And I said, no, oh, like I care about, I don't know jack about finances, you know. So I went and I met with this woman. And she said, what are you doing? I said, well, I've been, te you know, I've taught my whole life for the Colorado Art Council, the Washington State Arts Commission, blah, blah, blah. And I was teaching voiceover up in, uh, in Sonoma. And she said, well, that gets people jobs. And I said, yeah. And she said, okay, let's sit down and write this plan out. And, and she helped me write it. Mm -hmm. And I got $50,000 from the B of A. Ta-da! Wow. Wow. That's great. So I just started my studio. That's fantastic. Tell, yeah. tell us a little bit about Women in Animation. What is the, did you uh, start that group? I started the voiceover division okay. of it. And uh, any of you that have read uh, uh, Voiceover for Animation, that's Jean Ann Wright wrote that book, and she was one of the people in voice uh, in Women in Voiceover. Oh, God, uh, Jad Nagel. I mean, there's so many one, writers and everything. I used to have the writers come to my studio with their projects, and then the students got to read it for them so they could kind of hear what it sounded like. So um, it's, it, yeah, I mean, they just, a bunch of them just came last, uh, what was it, last Tuesday night. I had a women in it, you know. A, a, a women in animation group come over, so uh, there's so that that group people uh, in voice of some of them are writers, some of them are animators, uh, all kind of wanted to join in, and so we had a fun fun session. I don't have time to to, to work with them right now, but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so in terms in speaking about women in animation and women in the industry, how do you feel that it's changed? Uh, it, it has roles uh, for women changed in the past 20 years in the industry? Are you finding more uh, roles for women in animation? And Yeah, I think so. I, I think the other thing is, uh, like for instance in Clay Kids, they, there you see, you know, there's the, the, the two women and then there's the teacher, I mean Naomi and, and uh, Carol, and then you've got the boys, you know, Albert and uh, the, you know, Flippy and Robbie. And... Um, <laughs> A lot of the girl, you know, we all did a bunch of the extra voices and stuff. So that, to me, is a really balanced piece instead of the ones you see with all boys. And and uh, I think they balance the whole thing just in, in terms of Carol's kind of an environmentalist. Naomi's just into fashion. Robbie's the crazy. You know, Flip, Flippy's kind of wacky. Even Albert's kind of the, the brilliant little kid. Uh, so some of the stuff that I that is coming from overseas is, it seems to be sometimes a little bit more balanced. I mean, I think we still do the boy, a little bit more of the heavy boy cartoons. I think um, uh, Gravity Falls has been great with Mabel Pines. I mean, that's, she's just over the top, Kristen Schaal, you know. So, so, and then in Despicable Me, you had Kristen Wiig. And I know they're movie stars, you know. But um, so there's, there's more coming up uh, like that. And I think that, uh, and there's more commercials too. The commercials are... Uh, you're hearing more women on commercials. Hopefully, there'll be more women doing promos too. Let's hope. So, 
About Clay Kids. Tell us about Clay Kids, because you've produced 52 episodes. How did, how did that come about? That's, that's quite a project. Um, I think it came from voiceover for animation when Jean Ann, Jean Ann Wright uh, and uh, put that it, Focal Press put that out, and I think that um, Jean did it. Uh, Jean knew somebody that knew somebody, or somebody came, got, went to Focal Press and uh, found out who I was, and um, and the same thing happened with Daddy I'm a Zombie too. I think that was the same thing. Is that book kind of went all over Europe, and it was great. So. People said, oh, here's some people to work with there. Now, you also cast the voices in. Right, I was casting, well. casting for that, too. And, um, you know, I, I want to say this about, uh, about casting, because some people, they'll see my name on it, and I, I want people to know that when I cast, they, they know I'm a voiceover artist. It's not like I'm, I'm hiding that. But when I audition, I audition in a different name. I use a fo couple phony names. Sometimes I use a different name for every character I audition in. You know, I'll be like, yo, this is like Ricky Smith doing Albert. You know, like, excuse me. You know, and then I go into the voice. So a lot of times the, the, uh, my clients don't know that it's, that it's me until I walk in the booth. And I had a lot of fun with Daniel Torres when uh, Goner, the, the boy pirate, and Daddy I'm a Zombie and Mummy I'm a Zombie yes, were Goner. sitting outside. That would be my nails. Yes, Goner. Oh, uh, yes. On my nails. He's on my nails. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so anyway, the last day of, the, of doing the feature, uh, Daniel's sitting there with all these notes, and we've got all the, you know, animatics and everything. And... Uh, uh, I said, yeah, so uh, let's see, the Ricky Smith, uh, and I looked at my engineer, the Pat Torres, and I said, I hope Ricky can make it. I don't know if he's still on drugs. <laughs> <laughs> then Pat's nodding, and, and, and Daniel's looking like this, and I said, yeah, he's been in rehab. Nice kid, sweet, really creative, but, you know, tough family, and looking at my watch. And I said, you know what, I'm just going to have to go in there and do it for him, and Daniel's like... And then he went, I lassie, I'm ready to, you know, and he was like, oh, my God, you know. <laughs> so that's fun to play with my clients sometimes. Now, so that's with 52 episodes. And so are you, are you involved in the writing at all? Because I know you love to write. You know what happens, I, I, uh, because it's written uh, the, 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 with, with Clay. Well, what, what we did with Daddy and Mommy is sometimes things didn't quite fit in the animatic because mm -hmm. it was too long. The translators made it too long. So... You know, there was some times when we'd say, let's say it like this, or let's, let's throw this slang in here. Uh, with uh, Clay Kids, uh, sometimes it would, the translators, not particularly the writers, the writers were Spanish, uh, whoever translated sometimes would put things so not quite like Americans would say them. So, you know, we do this, you know, it's like, can we say this? How about if we say that? And would it be funny if we hit with that at the end? Mm -hmm. So there were some uh, moments that uh, even with the cast people, you know, with the people in the booth say, let's see, let's, uh, let's play with this line a little bit. Mm -hmm. So uh, we could do that. But the writing was really excellent. I think mm -hmm. they really did uh, a, a high level of entertainment more than now, just. Is there, are there more episodes coming or? <laughs> let's hope, yeah. Okay, that's, yeah, that's... Well, they're, they're, they're finishing it now because it's claymation and they're putting everything together with that now so we'll see if they get bumped up for another yeah claymation I haven't you know claymation is not you can not go common. on their site it's and see great. how they do it and how they hold yeah and that they get skateboarding yeah oh my god oh, I know, I know. <laughs> and they get flames coming out of the skateboard mm -hmm. I'm like I, I don't even know how they do that it's amazing, it's amazing. so talk us talk a little bit about uh daddy I'm a zombie and mummy I'm a zombie yeah, that's uh, well. That's Daniel Torres's group. I just mm -hmm. sent out a big thank you to them on my database today, and uh, I don't know what my connection is with Spain. I'm 100% Italian. Where are the Italians come and get me? What's going on? <laughs> um, but again, I think they, you know, we met Daniel. Man, he came and he saw the studio, and uh, he said, "Yeah, let's do it." And uh, I liked his, I liked his script, and uh, you know, you oh, usually great. get. I love the promos. Uh, yeah, yeah and the it's, it's great. great. But it's like, you know, you're looking at all this stuff. and uh, Casting is a hell of a job. And you cast all the voices in those, Yeah, right? yeah. So, now, I, when we say cast, it means that went out mm -hmm. to, to people to audition for. Then that goes to the client. Uh, I know some people think that the casting agent picks you. That's not, you're there to cast, to get it out to people and get it and get it in the folders and make sure they have all the right kind of information for it. And that's why it's so important for you to pay attention to how do I label my MP3 mm -hmm. and uh, how, you know, and when is it due? And the other thing is, 
in looking at all this information, you know, which which characters do you just think I could just dive into this, you know, instead of I'm going to try every one of them, you know, find the ones you think oh, this this really appeals to me. And the other thing is, what is that character's? If you don't read the whole Bible, you're lost. If you say, oh, I'm going to do Mackie or something. It's like, but who's Mackie in relationship to in the rest of the, you know? So some people don't won't read the whole thing, the Bible it's called. Mm -hmm. And so you read that, uh, you know, this character, he's always in trouble. He's always, you know, pounding somebody. That, so you know how to read him. So when you get when you're reading his lines. If, if they are with the, somebody else's lines, then you've even got a bigger deal because you can't just be, you know, pounding and feel like, yeah, I'm the villain in this. You've got to feel like, what's my relationship to the person I'm just now responding to? Because if you like them, it's, it's totally different. You know, like, hey, uh, thought maybe you'd do my homework, you know? But if the person you're responding to, you don't like, hey, why'd you do my homework? You owe me, you know? So there's a couple different ways you want to go with that. And I find that some people don't read the whole interaction of what are you responding to, what's your relationship to that person, so that you get the character when, when they're putting all their Now, are you out. always getting that, for the most part? Yeah. When you're, okay, when you're sending out. And you don't, so then when you are casting, you are sending out the information to people, but you're not necessarily weeding through the, the responses then at yeah, all. Yeah, I listen or to, them. that's part of a cast to have that quality control. Okay, so, so you if, do listen and you do weed some of them out. And yeah, so, so if you send me and say, like, mm -hmm. hi, this is Shannon Schmitz doing the children in the theater draw. I go, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> call George. Somebody call George. <laughs> oh. you know, or that, that, what I like is when somebody says, I said, you know, your volume is really low. I think it's a good performance, but your volume is so low on that. Hey, MJ, you're crazy. I could hear it fine. Did you have your speakers up? Oh. I mean, <laughs> those are the kind of, sometimes some of the responses you get from people, and you go, oh, no. I mean, so if you turn your speakers up and your headphones are in your home, you're, What's you think it sounds great. What's a VU meter? Yeah. What? <laughs> whoa, what? Because <laughs> I, I try and give, a, a, you know, a lot of people a chance to, auditioned, you know, some, mm -hmm. sometimes even some of my intermediate students, so they get that sense of, are you going to be responsible? Can you do this? Can you cut rise to the occasion? Or do you just go, I've had a lot of people say, MJ, oh my God, can I just come to the studio because I didn't get my stuff together yet? And I go, no. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot. I mean, if the client's willing to pay for, uh, uh, for something done at your studio, then, you, you know, that's great. Most of them, it's, it's going to be an email send out because mm -hmm. they don't have that kind of time for me, an engineer. I'm going to sit there and listen to you. I, ha I did have one client this year that, that wanted to do that, and that was, that, that was great. Uh, we don't know what will happen with that, that project, but that was great because we could, we could bring people in for five hours mm -hmm. that really wanted to come and have direction. And it's sad that we don't get a lot of direction. That's why it's so up to you to read everything and know everything. Now, is there any... I've, I've always wanted to know, cross-reference like between animation and, and let's say video games. Uh huh. So if if you, I mean, what what are the what what are the similarities and what are the differences? Well, I think with video games, it, it, most of them uh, are dark. I would mm -hmm. just say they're kind of dark. One time I was talking to my agent, Mike Odell, and I said. You know, there a lot of times I don't audition for them because they are so disgusting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some and, and disgusting in terms of their relations to women. Hey, let's cut her head off. Yeah. Um, so I don't audition for a lot of them. But sometimes when I have, uh, mm -hmm. my, my agent says, you know, you go, you, you're too creative with them. It's dark. Just do it dark. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, it you know, animation, there doesn't seem to be that much, you know, it's more light and up and fun and, mm -hmm. and, and happy and less violent. And games are always trend, trending mm -hmm. toward that. So is it pretty much if, if, if I'm in voiceover, do I make a decision, oh, it's going to be animation or it's going to be video games? No, or yeah, you can I, do both. You can do both. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. It's just that you're going to have a different way of doing it. It's probably mm -hmm. going to be a little bit more serious. But right. it isn't like you can't, um, you, you know, you can't use the same voice that... Uh, you're, you're using for one character, except it's going to be tougher. You've got to just read the script to know, okay, I'm going to do this voice. Look out, you know, at 45, at 3 o'clock. You know, it's like you mm -hmm. can do that. And the same thing if you've got a character in that, hey, what's up, Johnny? I mean, you can still maybe edge mm -hmm. it back. So you should have enough variety in your voice to do that. It's because it's acting choices, not so much where's the placement and all that, but 
What's my acting choice? Well, you said something so interesting, especially very relevant of what's happening uh, lately with the uh, Gamergate, if anybody's heard of that, uh, but about, about the treatment of women in the uh, video game industry. What about the treatment of it in the NFL, man? Mm -hmm. Hey! <laughs> hey! Hey, bitch, come here, hey. Um, it's a it's a hot topic, and and actually uh, we could be uh, you know if we're broadcasting this, you know I I know that there are people who are afraid to speak out about you know the if there's any, you know. Um. Well, you know sometimes actually I was at a friend's house and this uh, her son was sitting on the couch doing you know games and it you know it was just like wow this is so violent I mean, you know so I I feel badly about some of the young kids, young guys mm -hmm. that are playing these mm -hmm. games. And uh, I love that John Stewart had it on his show, on The Daily Show once, where he said, yeah, there's no violence against women. And then he shows these two guys just having fun chopping this woman right. up, and her head flies, and it's like, he was made, you know, I think he's one of the first people that really went after mm -hmm. that in, in the games, and rape and beating, and, and there's been some and that I've- the I've, portrayal I, of, of the woman, too, the, I mean- Right, yeah, you know, I mean, that's- always, well, this is what I said. What they look like, they're always, you know, I, I'd like to know who goes into battle in high heels and your breasts <laughs> hanging out. Yeah! <laughs> Come on, bring it on! Let me get that F-40. Oh. So, I, I'm interested. I always you know, run into battle in high heels, don't you? Well, I, I certainly hope that, that this, whatever issues are, that are going on get resolved, uh, uh, you know, quickly because there really is... On that? There. Is it down here? <laughs> oh, Christ. There you go. There you go. I know. Pardon me, I have to run up through my. There you go. Now am I back on? Speaking of, speaking of, no. <laughs> and speaking of, so tell us, what are you up to now? What, what are some current projects that you're working on? Actually, tomorrow I am uh, starting to direct the grid. Uh, Zombie Mall, Outlet Zombie Mall, which is written by uh, Linda Anderson. Mm -hmm. This is a great story. Linda Anderson came to my class, liked it, and came up to me and said, do you ever do video? And I said, yeah, I have some video things. And she said, well, I'm a video person. Would you trade in the classes? Uh, do you have some video projects? I said, yeah, I do. So she came to the beginning class and the intermediate. I did her five weeks each of those. And, um, you know, we became friends. And she's my, been my script supervisor on Clay Kids and Daddy and, and, the, and the Daddy stuff. And uh, she said, I, I love this so much, I'm going to write. So she wrote the grid uh, zombie mall, and it's it's about all, we're all electrical appliances. Ah. Switch Hazel. I mean, there's all <laughs> all the names. Remo is the remote, you know. And uh, if you go online, the grid uh, grid outlet zombie mall, uh, you'll you'll see it. So it's a feature, and uh, we're starting it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, Danny Pardo is in it, and um, it's it's a it's really it's, it's a really a good cast. It's a labor of love. She's done some crowdfunding and stuff with it, but we're mm -hmm. going to record it at my place, and uh, yeah, so that's going to be taken up a, a good month. Wow, sounds great. Well, I'm super excited for uh, doing a workout with Let's, you, and so I think it. what we're going to do before we'll, we'll we'll go off to commercial break. When we come back, we're going to do a. A group character workout yeah, we'll do with a MJ. Character. So it's going to be a whole lot of fun, and we're going to do a couple, probably a couple of uh, live directed sessions. So make sure you stay tuned. Everybody have a drink. All right. Loosen up. And we'll be right back. Yeah. Woo. 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 Woo.